Java EE6 is probably the biggest ever release of the Java EE platform, with lots of new features and focus on developer productivity. For developers, one of the most important things is knowing which version of the Java Enterprise specs are supported by which WebSphere versions. WebSphere 8.5 supports Java EE6, just like 8.0 did. Java EE6 is probably the biggest ever release of the Java EE platform. There's lots of new features and a serious focus on developer productivity. This is the first time that three successive versions of WebSphere have supported different Java EE versions. WebSphere 6.1 supported J2EE 1.4, WebSphere 7.0 supported Java EE 5, and WebSphere 8.0 and 8.5 support Java EE 6. Which means that if you're skipping over 7.0 and going straight to 8.0 or 8.5, there are a ton of new features. We can split up Java EE 6 technologies into three general groups. There are completely new technologies like context and dependency injection, bean validation, and JAX-RS RESTful web services. Some of the existing technologies have significant changes, like Java server faces, servlets, Java persistence architecture, and EJB. And some technologies haven't changed, like JSP, JMS, and JAX-WS. There are so many changes and new features in Java EE6 that it's difficult to summarize them quickly. The programming model continues to get simpler, with source code annotations displacing XML configuration in servlets and JSF. There's a continued push to adopt good ideas from the Java community back into the standards. So we see things like standard dependency injection framework and bean validation. There are improvements to JSF and JPA to address issues and provide features for more use cases. Servlets and EJBs get asynchronous capability, and there's full support for RESTful services with JAX-RS. Enterprise Edition 6 recognizes that the Enterprise Edition has changed over the years and looks to mark some technologies for being phased out in the future, although full Java EE6 servers still have to support all the technologies. It's common for companies to skip a version of WebSphere for whatever reason. If you're migrating from a WebSphere 6.1 or earlier environment and skipping over WebSphere 7, you also need to deal with the changes in Java Enterprise Edition 5. Probably the most significant change in Java EE 5 was the introduction of Java Persistence, or JPA. JPA is a standard for Java Persistence inspired by Hibernate and other object relational mapping frameworks. JPA provides a way to allow the server to automatically persist data from regular Java objects in memory. It replaced entity EJBs, which everyone hated. Java EE 5 also greatly simplified the programming of EJBs and web services by introducing source code annotations in place of XML configuration for complex coding. This was also the first time the JSF web application framework was required in all application servers. For the longest time, companies have needed to develop applications for WebSphere, but haven't been able to use open source tools. IBM has now released free Eclipse plugins, so you can set up an Eclipse environment to develop for WebSphere without having to perform a lot of manual steps or test against some other server in development. These tools make it much easier to do WebSphere development without hefty license fees for development tools. We have some more details on a post on our blog. One change to WebSphere 8.5 that's going to be big for developers is the Liberty Profile server. This is a different code base than the full WebSphere application server that's designed to be more lightweight with faster startup and application deployment times. Anything that compiles and runs on the Liberty profile will also run on the full WebSphere profile if that's still being used for production. Liberty profile is configured with a single simplified XML file. This allows for interesting use cases where the application code configuration and Liberty server itself is deployed using an unzip and go model. This model could be really useful for provisioning servers in a cloud platform. If you're interested in Liberty Profile, you should look at the 8.5.5 version because that version was fully certified against the Java EE6 web profile. IBM provides yet another free tool for developers that can help with migrating your applications. The Application Migration Toolkit can scan the source code of your applications and look for code that won't compile or code that needs to be changed from the newer standards. This tool is a RAD or Eclipse plugin, so it can even provide some quick fixes to make the required changes automatically. Let's look at what's new for administrators. 
One of the biggest changes introduced with WebSphere 8.0 and carried over to 8.5 is the installation process. Now you use a separate tool called the Installation Manager to install software and apply fix packs. You need to install this tool first before using it to install other software. Silent installation is possible for the Installation Manager and for WebSphere software. The Installation Manager installs software from so-called repositories, and there's a packaging utility that can manage repositories for you. WebSphere 8.0 and 8.5 have a new optional logging framework called HPEL. This new framework is high-performance, extensible logging, but the old logging, system.log, is still the default until you switch a server to HPL mode. The framework provides better performance logging and tracing and tools to filter and search log records. There's also a Java interface that you can use to write custom log analysis tools. By default, HPEL stores data in a binary format and there is no text log. Although it's possible to enable a text log, you'll get the best performance if you leave that disabled and use the extraction tools when you need to see text. The log extraction tools are one of the biggest benefits of the HPEL framework. In the web-based administration console, you can filter messages for severity, or look at a specific time range, or look at a specific restart of the server. In the old days, the only thing you could do was indicate a range of line numbers to display. There's also a command line log viewer tool that provides the same filtering and search capabilities. Both tools can export the matching log records to a text file. WebSphere 8.5 adds intelligent management. These are features that used to be in the Virtual Enterprise edition of WebSphere, but they're now part of the network deployment with 8.5. These features provide intelligent routing of application requests, dynamic clustering to adapt to changes in demand, health management to avoid adverse runtime conditions, and application edition management to help with rolling out application updates. Collectively, these features increase the availability and performance of WebSphere applications at runtime, all with solutions that are built into the product so you don't have to design custom solutions. The intelligent routing feature is implemented by a new runtime component, the on-demand router. This component sits directly in front of the WebSphere servers hosting the applications. It prioritizes traffic based on customizable policies. This intelligent routing ensures that requests from lower priority applications don't prevent requests from higher priority applications from meeting their performance goals. WebSphere can even take the knowledge of application usage and look after deploying applications to additional servers to meet the overall performance goals for the system. The dynamic clustering feature goes with the intelligent routing feature. With dynamic clustering, the WebSphere system can modify the size of the clusters hosting WebSphere applications based on the demand for those applications. To do this, you define node groups, and you can establish policies for what instances of different server templates can be run on a node and how many server instances can be running on a node at any one time. Then, WebSphere can make decisions about shrinking the size of the cluster running one application to free up resources for running more servers in another cluster that's seeing a spike in demand. WebSphere is able to adjust to changes in demand much more rapidly than you can do manually. One of the most common administrative challenges is how to monitor conditions of the environment to detect when problems occur and how to intervene with corrective action when required. The health management feature of WebSphere 8.5 can look for common adverse conditions and take action when they're detected. This action could be as simple as sending a notification email or as advanced as automatically restarting a server or preventing application requests from being routed to a server. This level of self-management can improve the continuous availability of WebSphere resources without requiring manual solutions or additional third-party monitoring software. Once administrators spend less time taking corrective action to resolve these issues, they can spend more time investigating why the issues occurred in the first place. All WebSphere environments need a solution for how to update applications with as smooth a transition as possible. WebSphere 8.5 provides better support for upgrading applications without interrupting end users. You can run multiple versions of an application concurrently. This is mostly useful for validating applications before rolling them out. When the application is ready, you can have the on-demand routing system send new users to the new version, while active users gradually bleed off the old version. And if you need to, it's easy to roll back to a previous version. So there you have it. 
WebSphere 8.5 provides full support for all of Java EE6's new features with focus on developer productivity.